other day I made a video about stirrup leathers and why they stretch and the best way to check them and, and in that video I promised you that I would talk you through the different types of stirrup leathers that we can get. Now we're on lockdown and I'm locked up at home so I only have access to the stirrup leathers and stuff that I have at home but luckily I have a different pair than my son has and he has a different pair than my daughter has. So we have three different types of leathers in the house and I think actually between us we cover the the range of the most popular stirrup leathers. First of all, let's start with the plain leather stirrup leathers. So I have them here. These are my daughters. So it's a plain leather stirrup leathers that tend to stretch. These are the ones that we were discussing in the previous video about leathers and why they stretch. Um, and we looked at a butt of leather, so a side of leather that these are cut from. So if you look at these, you can see, you look at these, you can see that these are literally a strip of leather. It's leather in a strip, solid leather in a strip, cut out. And because of that, like we were discussing on the previous video, leather stretches because leather is skin. So there's nothing to stop these from stretching. If you get a really good quality leather that's cut from the top of the butt and you swap your stirrup leathers over all the time, then there isn't a problem with having these leathers. They're perfectly nice leathers. So if you have the plain leather stirrup leathers, just make sure you have a really good quality leather pair and make sure that you swap them around every time that you clean your tack, you swap the leather from left to the right to try and even out any imbalance. Next up, we're gonna move on to the non-stretch stirrup leathers. So this is what my son has. So these leathers are non-stretch. They are designed not to stretch. They have a webbing core and they have leather wrapped around the webbing core. So they have here, this is like a thinner leather wrapped around webbing. If you look very carefully in the holes, sometimes you can see it's got a bit of webbing in there. So these are thinner leather wrapped around webbing. The webbing is similar to the sort of webbing in seatbelt. So this is the webbing. So this is very, very, very strong stuff. This is what's inside here. So you have this webbing, you have a leather wrapped around it. And that in theory stops the stirrup leather from stretching because the webbing itself doesn't stretch. Again, it depends very much on quality. So sometimes the cheaper webbing can stretch a little bit. The more expensive stuff tends not to. If you're very uneven, there is, whilst there's not a lot of stretch in the webbing, it can fray slightly and holes can pull a little bit lower than the other. So whilst they're called non-stretch, often they're more like minimal stretch maybe, or less stretch. They don't stretch quite as much stirrup leathers. The leather that's wrapped around is either just a normal, a, a, a thinner bit of leather, or sometimes on the more posh ones, it's calf leather. Uh, leather, because it's thinner, it's soft, and so they're, they're bendy and they're flexible. The calf leather is even softer and kind of like, mm, a bit sticky and a bit grippy and a bit, like you want to lick it. Don't lick it, that's weird. So on these non-stretch leathers, another feature that these have on them, which some do and not all do, some do, is that if you look at the buckle, the buckle's got a slight bend to it, can you see that? And so that sits up on the stirrup bar there and it, it takes a little bit of bulk out of the, out of your leg. So you, the skirt of the saddle sits over here and then your leg sits over the skirt. So that bend there can just help take a little bit of bulk out from under your leg. Yeah? Now if you don't like bulk under your leg at all, and some people don't, especially the dressage riders, then the T-bar leathers were created for that. So these are my leathers here, the T-bar leathers. I have the T-bar leathers because, well, my horse is, because, well, my horse is, I don't really know how to say this politely, but my horse is shaped a little bit like a beer barrel. My horse is very rotund. He's not fat, he's just a little bit heavier boned than the average horse. So because of that, and because I don't have the widest hips or the longest legs, because of that I do really struggle with how much bulk I have between my legs when I'm riding, especially dressage when, my, when I'm expected to really open my hips up and hang my legs down. So they have like in here, a T bar. So it's a bar in the shape of a T, genius. I would name that was a genius bar in the shape of a T, T bar. Because I have this T-shaped bar there, it means that the holes themselves have this slightly different um, shape, which you need to be able to get the T-bar into the hole, twist it around and bring it through. 
So what makes these stirrup leathers different from the others is that T-bar there means that you don't have the buckle at the top. So on other leathers, you have the buckle underneath your leg. And on this, these T-bar ones, you have just this little loop. So that loop literally just slides onto your stirrup bar. So under your leg, there's nothing. So your saddle skirt sits here and your leg sits over there and there's no bulk. And when you compare that to a normal buckled one, you can see that there's much less bulk on this one than there is on this one. Now, who can think of some of the possible downsides of a T-bar leather? Well, number one, although it has a nylon core, so again, it has, it has this nylon webbing inside it to make it stronger. So whilst it has a nylon core, there is only, in essence, one width. So this is what you get from a T-bar leather, and this is what you get from a normal leather. So you don't have as much leather underneath your leg, which is really good in terms of bulk and in terms of getting your leg close to the horse. But so for that reason, because you only have this one strip of leather instead of the two strips of leather, um, it is recommended by many people um, and again, it's, it's, it's not set in stone, but it is recommended by many people not to jump in these leathers or do anything that puts a great deal of strain down these leathers or to use these leathers if you are a particularly heavy rider in terms of weight as well as in terms of how you ride. However, for flat work, they are very, very, very popular because they really do eliminate that bulk. You can see here, there's just almost nothing under your leg. And because of that, they are really popular for flat work. When you get your T-bar leathers, they'll arrive like this probably or like this. So, some people wonder what this thing here for is for. This is to slide over the little T-bar when you've got it done up to stop it from snagging on your trousers or rubbing your saddle or getting caught on anything. So, um, this is the, that's what that's for. So the first thing you do is you get your stirrup and you put your little T-bar through the stirrup. Now, in some cases, it's the I'm lucky in my stirrups, I've got this Acavello stirrups and the hole's quite big, so that fits in there no problem at all. But in some cases, that there is quite, on stirrups it's quite small and you can't get the T-bar through, in which case you need to put the leather bit through. Now, if you're putting the leather bit through, it is recommended that you take off this little slidey on bit first, because otherwise you end up with that the wrong side of the leather. So if you're going to put the leather bit through, take that off, you pop your leather bit through, you slide your leather thing back on, through the hole, there we go. Now, your buckle then needs to go through whatever hole you want it on. So say for example, we when, I hop, when we ride, we ride with it back down here, you push it through, you twist it around and you let it drop down. And then don't forget to slide down your little bit of leather to cover it up. There we go, like that. To run them up, you slide up your little bit of leather get your t-bar you take it up there's a hole right at the top up here usually up there and it's kind of separate from all the other holes so you put it in there and then you can run your stirrup up like normal again the t-bar leathers are non-stretch because um, I don't think I've ever seen a pair made out of solid leather I'm honest I think they're all non-stretch um, and again they can be made out of a variety of leathers they can be made out of just normal thinner leather or calf leather um, and they all have this webbing inside so again this webbing is what makes them non-stretch that goes inside here and that's what gives you that non-stretchness because as we know leather stretches because it's skin webbing doesn't stretch or shouldn't stretch as much to put our t-bar leathers onto our saddle we slide this little bit here at the top onto the stirrup bar it just literally slides onto the stirrup bar and then it hangs down, the stirrup hangs down. So a quick recap, we have just run through plain leather stirrups which are made out of solid leather cut straight from the cow's butt. <laughs> side of, that's a side of leather, not an actual cow's bottom. They are usually slightly more cost effective in terms of they're less expensive when you go to buy them. But you still do need to be buying good quality ones of these and the, the really cheap ones that you see in the shop will usually be made out of cheaper leather and therefore will usually stretch quicker and more unevenly than the more expensive ones or the better quality ones. Next we looked at the non-stretch leathers, so these are my son's ones and these are the non-stretch leathers that have leather wrapped around webbing 
This is the webbing. It's wrapped around the webbing to make them strong and in theory not stretch. But remember, they don't always do what they say on the tin. Sometimes there can be some stretch in non-stretch stirrup leathers. It's unavoidable on a grey my saddle. Now we looked at these and we discussed that it's only one bit of leather instead of two. So you do only have half the amount of leather coming off the bar. So that needs to be taken into consideration if there's any issue with your weight as a rider or how you ride or if you do lots of fast work or galloping or hunting or anything like that. Definitely worth considering. So whatever stirrups you have or whatever stirrups you decide to get, the most important thing is to check that they are safe. So yes, we don't want them to stretch and be uneven, but what we really don't want is for your stitching to come loose or for your stirrup leather to be unsafe. You should be checking the integrity of your tack regularly, whether it's every time you clean your tack or if you're like someone I know, not me, and you only clean your tack every six months, then you need to check it a little bit more regularly than that. Your saddle fitter, when they come out, will check the basics for you. But you mustn't rely on them alone. You need to look at it yourself and you need to know yourself whether things are safe. So when you're cleaning your tack and you take your stirrup leathers off, always take your stirrup leathers off to clean them by the way, um, you take them off and have a look at them, undo them, and have a look at the stitching here. So this is the buckle and this is where the buckle is stitched on. Now I see a lot that get very worn just here and the stitching starts to come out. So really check the stitching here and check that none of it is worn and that it's still attached the whole way along here. What you don't want is any of this to be loose and then check this little bit of leather here, check that that is still intact through there, yeah? And make sure you check the holes too. Check that they've not split. Sometimes you see they split across here. So check, to be honest, my daughter doesn't ride enough to split any kind of stirrup leathers. Um, but so yeah, check that they've not split. So you're gonna check the stitching. You're gonna check that your holes haven't split. On the non stretch ones, the stitching is slightly different. But again, so checking all around here, so checking all the stitching around the buckle is good. And, check and on your non stretch ones, again, so sort of check the stitching around the top, through here and check that your holes haven't split or cracked as well. So there you go, that's the difference between the three different types of stirrup leathers that we have here. The solid leather, the non-stretch leather, and the T-bar leathers. I hope you enjoyed it and that it helped somewhat. Um, please don't forget to keep watching our videos. Subscribe by pressing the subscribe button somewhere. I think it floats up somewhere around here. And don't forget to comment below if you have any ideas for any future videos. In the meantime, have a lovely day and keep smiling.